Hey, it's Random Goat here, and this is gonna be a next video in our GitHub basic series, where in the last video I showcased how we can set up a basic GitHub repository. So now we have a very basic repository. We set it up last time and connected it to GitHub. In this video, I then wanna showcase the basic functionality of if we wanna stay on some basic project, we wanna work on it alone, and we then wanna push our changes to GitHub. So we're not going into branches yet. We're not going into like merging stuff. This is just simply a single person working on a project or on a branch. I will then have my changes from local pushed onto GitHub. So right now I have the same setup local and GitHub. Some few basic commands I will then often use is I would use git status. And I can see here in this case that my branch is up to date with origin main, meaning I have no local changes. And it should also be worth noting that I am using IntelliJ because I mainly use Java. So most of these features, or I'm also using some of the features of IntelliJ to make it a bit more clear what's happening. But if using other IDEs like um, Visual Studio Code, they have actually more or less the same features. So let's say right now I have this project. This is a base setup from IntelliJ and it's actually a bit messy. So I will just delete a bunch of stuff. And let's create a new Java class, just call it main. And also here you can see that actually IntelliJ is prompting me to add this file directly, but let's not add it yet. And let's just have a very basic Java program here, doing a hello world. So what we now would be able to see if we go back and do git status, is that we can see that a bunch of stuff have been deleted. And we have some untracked files. And the untracked files are newly added files, which are no, not tracked yet. So all GitHub knows is that files inside the source folder has been changed. So if we just look at our current position, I can see I'm right here. So I'm standing inside the root of our project, our random project. I can then as was also prompted by IntelliJ, add stuff to like the memory of Git, more or less. And what I personally mostly do when working like this is I would do git status, I will see is there anything mystical. And I would then first of all just git add dot, which just adds everything. I could also add specific files or folders to not add everything at once. But if I just do git add everything, and we now do git status, we should see that we now also, other than the deleted files, also have a new file called source main.java. And just quickly, if you're using tools like IntelliJ, on the left side, there's a commit area where you can see more of the same things. So you can see all of these files have been deleted and we can see this new file. And later on, when starting to looking at like changing files and merging, IntelliJ also provides a bunch of extra features. But for now, just note, we could do git status to see what has been changed. And what we then do is that when using Git, we have a process of adding as we first did. We then need to commit our changes, which kind of put them into a state of being ready. It's still only local, but they are ready to be sent to GitHub. So we do git commit, and then need to add a commit message. Here I will say added new main file, for example and enter, all our changes, all our deletion and our addition of a new file is then added under a commit with this message. But it is not pushed to GitHub yet. As we can see here, also looking at the commit history in GitHub, we can see we only have the first commit. But if we now do git status locally, we can see that we have one, we are ahead of origin main by one commit. So what I would do, again, just working simply, a single branch, no conflicts, I would then simply do git push. And it's then gonna be pushing all our changes. And now again, if we do git status, we can see we are up to date with origin main. And if we go on to IntelliJ, not IntelliJ, GitHub, and reloads, we should see now that we have the text added new main file. I have two commits and we can see that our 
state of GitHub is looking at the source is now going to match our state of our local setup. If we then once again, let's say we added a few more exclamation marks here. Again, we can then do git status. We can see in this case, we have modified one file, our source main. We would do git add, git add everything, git status. We can now see that it's green, so it's kind of like noted. And notice we are only committing things that have been added. So we can also add like some things and not everything and then commit those things. Also a way of being able to handle what exactly we're actually sending to GitHub. So once again, we'll git commit. Just do a few extra stuff. That's a bad text, but. And another thing, these commit messages are also very discussed. How you do them properly how you ensure that they are actually very descriptive of what happens, because later on it might be very useful being able to go through the commit history and see what was changed in each of these steps. So don't copy my uh, most stuff naming here, but it's just simple for the sake of this video. So once again, we can do git status, we're ahead of origin main by what commit, and we would do git push. And we should now see if we go on to GitHub once again, reload three commits, if we look into the main Java file, we can see it has all these extra exclamation marks. So pretty simple. Just remember when working on like the same branch, doing a simple setup like this, when you want to push changes to GitHub, we first add the files we have changed, the files we want to be pushed. We then need to commit our added files and we then need to push our changes. So if you enjoyed this quick demonstration of how to push changes using GitHub, please leave a like and subscribe and I wish you all the wonderful